Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Pfeiffer and today we will be uh, looking at MathCAD 15 uh, due to user requests and um, we're going to be looking at it under the framework of an offset slider crank uh, just so we have a problem set to work with um, but it doesn't really matter what you're doing uh, these skills will apply. So if we go ahead and take a look at our screen here I've taken the liberty of already copying and pasting uh, some just JPEG files and this defines our problem pretty well. Um, so what we have to do first is uh, obviously uh, put it our name and course or whatever. So I start um, a text region by using a quotation mark and then I can type Daniel and you just hit enter to go to the next line. Uh, inverted slider crank. Now, uh, basics about moving things. You can select multiple blocks and move multiple blocks by selecting using your box tool. Just click and drag. You can um, select just one of them. You can hold the shift key to select more. Um, that's about that as far as selection goes. Excuse me. And then uh, if we narrow that, Notice it automatically word wraps to fit. That's kind of a nice feature. Uh, to move it, you wait for your mouse cursor to turn into a little hand there. And we want that up in the top corner. Now, we're only working with this one page, so I do want to change my view. I go up to View, Zoom. 200% works pretty well. It's pretty close to full page. Um, now, this is just a factor that because MathCAD works in radians, I have to have that uh, pi over 180, pi radians over 180 degrees uh, term in there somewhere so that it can do all the correct computations. So here's a pr picture of an inverted slider crank and some data to go with it. <clears throat> this is where we're going to start assigning variables. Uh, so link 1 right here will give the variable name D. So D and then you push shift colon gives you the assignment equals. Um, so that is 6. Link 2 is A. I know it's a little weird to do it in this order, but that's the way the picture defines it, so we're going to go with it. Uh, link 4 is C. And that is 4. Now uh, we get a a little error message here. It says this expression redefines a bath MathCAD built-in unit. Well let's do a little test up here. If I try P control G to get the Greek, uh, then I push equal, it'll give me that. Now if I use the other assignment variable, colon, I can say equals 3. It says, okay, you've redefined a MathCAD built-in constant. And that's okay, because we're not using the speed of light here, we're talking about uh, mechanisms in the real world not even close to the speed of light. So I don't really need that uh, to worry about that too much. So gamma is just G all uh, sorry G control G will give you a gamma symbol. Assignment var equals uh, 90 times fac which is that factor term that we talked about earlier. Now the last one was Q, control G. Now to get a subscript you can do period 2 and then assignment equals. This looks like decimal 2 but once I click away from the screen out of the region it'll change um, and that's 30 fact. Great, so now we've learned about subscript, assignment variables. Alright, so now this one's a little off. If I want to take all of those and make it look nice and pretty I can use these align down and align across. I want to align them across and Bam, it's done. Uh, just like that. So now let's list our unknowns. So I'm going to do uh, text region. I could use the quotation marks, but let's just put unknown. And then as soon as I hit the space bar, it says down here, you're now inserting a text region. You might have missed it, but it was right there. You can rewind it and see it. Unknown variables. All right. So things I do not know are the length b. I'm going to just guess um, because we're using solve blocks and it needs an initial guess. Um, let's see, this 6, 2, 4, I don't know, something like 5 is a reasonable guess. 
then we can assign the other unknown variables of theta4 and theta3. We don't know theta3, we don't know theta4, um, and that's it. We know theta1 is 0, um, so we don't actually need to worry about that in our calculations here. So, Q, Alt, Control, G, period, 3, assignment variable is, uh, looking at the picture, uh, it's something greater than 180, so we'll just say 200 times factor, and Q, Alt, Control, G, period, 4, is something I don't know, 98, it's a good guess, <laughs> times factor. All right, now we have our unknown variables. They're lined up already. Um, life's good. So you could also put in guess values, um, something, call it something like that, like guesses or unknown variables, something like that's good. Now, if this is too crowded, what you can do is you can click in the line you want to drop and then enter it. And that'll drop down the lines below it. So now I've got a nice looking sh professional looking sheet. Um, I want those to be over a little bit more. Perfect. All right, uh, the next thing I'm going to do is using a solve block. So you want to start the solve block by typing given and then just click away from it. Uh, I tried a, a lot of different things. It works with capital G, it works with lowercase g. Um, just don't hit spacebar or it'll make it into a text block and that you don't want. So now it says given. All right, so what do I know? Well, let's, we know that theta 3 and 4 are related here uh, by gamma. So we could say that theta 3 minus gamma equals theta 4, or whatever, theta 4. Now you have to push control equals because this is um, the equivalency equals, the one that you're used to in all of your math life. Um, theta 4 equals theta 3 minus gamma. That's one equation. So now we have three unknown variables. We need three equations. Uh, so the next equations, we're going to use our vector loop equation. I like starting at the origin and then just going around in a circle. So given that all of the uh, <coughs> all of the angle measures are from the x-axis, we know that each x component is going to be the hypotenuse or the length here of the link times the cosine of the angle. So we're going to just, given the way that we've defined our system, we'll say uh, this is a cosine theta 2, a, and I don't believe you need the multiplied sign, but just to be safe, I'm going to put that in there for right now, cosine theta 2 minus, now I'm going to speed this up a little bit, and then what I did here is I clicked there, all the way on the left, and then as I hit spacebar, you see the blue line underlines more. Now I push control C, control V, and that's going to be minus B cosine theta 3, minus C cosine Wait, yes, C cosine theta 4, minus D. And then this is going to be equal to 0 because our total x displacement, if we go around the vector loop, is 0. Now, the s last equation will be the y components, and I'm going to do the same trick I did before and continue pushing spacebar to select all the terms I want. Now, D does not have a Y component, so I'm not going to include that in this particular equation. So when I paste it here, all I have to do is I double-click there and type in sign. Um, in MathCAD Prime, I know you actually have to put the delete key, which is an extra keystroke. It's a little annoying. Um, I found some advantages to working in MathCAD 15. Uh, the biggest one being that you can break a really long equation up uh, over multiple lines. Um, however, I find the user interface of MathCAD Prime is uh, a little more 
like Microsoft Word. It's it's more um, visually based, a little less on the uh, syntax that we're using here. So uh, you push Control equals again zero. Great. Now the last thing we need to do to find our answers here are find parentheses uh, the three things we don't know b theta three and u alt control g period four parentheses equals. Now, it found my things, but it covered up my equation, so I don't really like the way that that looks. So I'm going to move it down. And uh, this is not very helpful for me right now. Um, so what we're going to do is, uh, in our within here, we can put the divided by that factor term to get it into degrees. Now, if I I have to pay attention to where my cursor is. Right now it's to the right. And if I push divided by factor, it goes on the bottom. If I have my cursor on the left and I push divided by, it puts the variable in the numer in the denominator, letting me type in the ver numerator, which I don't want to do in this particular case. So to convert like so, bam. So our guess wasn't, you know, this one was pretty far off, but it still converged to the correct value. Um, and this is for the top solution, but right now we're only going to be considering the top solution case. And um, in part two, we're going to look at a little bit more um, detailed on um, how to use uh, assign larger variables using square roots, etc. that sort of thing um, to find use the numeric values to uh, solve the same problem. So again, this is Dan Pfeiffer, and I hope you uh, leave some feedback for me either in the YouTube channel below or uh, send it to this email address right here. Uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you in part two.